Thank you very much indeed. I, I'm used to usually getting about four to six minutes um, uh, to speak in the Parliament. So the notion that I've got something like 20 minutes uh, ahead of me um, is bringing on a sense of, of probably the equivalent of agoraphobia. Um, but I'm delighted to be here. I'm, I'm, let me start with, with a thanks um, and then move on to an ask. I mean, the thanks is to the Humanist Society of Scotland for hosting this event. Um, I think for allowing this debate, as you said, Maggie, um, to take place, it's, it's already um, picking up pace. We're, we're, we're seeing that in, in a political context, but I think we're seeing it in a societal context uh, as well. And the more that we discuss these issues, which are very difficult, um, I think they can, be, they can feel quite divisive, um, but I think only by discussing them can we get a better understanding of different perspectives. Uh, and ultimately, it's a, it's a debate that absolutely needs to be had. So thank you for, for helping promote that. Thank you also to the uh, to Humanist Society members here in Scotland and across the UK for the work that you're doing promoting that debate within political parties, within my own party, I know in, uh, within the Liberal Democrats, members of the Humanist Society have been very active in stimulating that debate, bringing it motions forward to conference, etc. Uh, but that is the same in, in other parties as well, and indeed beyond political parties. So the role that that um, members of the Humanist Society are, are playing in stimulating that debate on an individual basis, I'd also want to recognise. Uh, and at a, at a personal level, can I very much thank Fraser for all the support that he's provided to me and I know has been providing on this issue to, to my colleagues within Parliament over a number of years. I'm very, very fortunate in the uh, support group I have around me. You've introduced all of them, Amanda, uh, Amanda Ali and, uh, and, and Sorsha, but Fraser as well. Um, and uh, I, I think given the scale of what lies uh, ahead, having the reassurance of that expertise, uh, that support around me is, is invaluable and I want to put on record uh, that at the outset. So that having been done, um, I feel um, uh, that I can now legitimately make an ask of you. I suspect most of you in this room have probably already um, contributed to the, the consultation on the proposals I launched back in September. If you haven't, I would strongly encourage you uh, to do so. Um, I would also, though, encourage you to speak to family, to friends, to neighbours, to, to those you come into contact with, and encourage them to do likewise. Uh, I'm not sure my office will necessarily thank me for saying it, given that the response to the consultation has already been rather overwhelming. Um, but I think there's, there's genuine momentum behind um, the, the, the campaign for a change in the law here. Uh, I believe that momentum is going to be sufficient um, to see us um, be successful uh, over the next couple of years in bringing forward those changes. Um, this is, to me, the next big Liberal reform. But I think it's not just because there's always a need to avoid complacency in this, um, but actually this is, this is a small but it's a significant change in the law that we're looking to make. And therefore, while public support has consistently been strong um, in, in relation to the support um, across society in Scotland and indeed the UK, for a change in the law. I think it's important that as many people as possible engage um, in this process so that we can build uh, on that support, but build a consensus and build confidence in whatever changes that we, we bring forward. So wherever you stand on the issue, whether you have strong views on some aspects, but, but maybe are, are either more ambivalent or uncertain in, other, in, in relation to other aspects, I would encourage you to, um, uh, to engage with that consultation and, and as I say, um, almost evangelise uh, on behalf of, 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 uh, of the need to engage with that, that consultation, which concludes um, on the 22nd of December. The Smart Survey link can be, can be found on the Scottish Parliament uh, website. So, I, Maggie's introduced um, the other speakers that, that are coming after me. I, it, it, it's a reminder to me that I'm the least expert of the panellists in front of you. Um, so I think what we'll hear from them is, is um, a lot of fascinating um, insights into the research, into the international precedents, into the, into the very harrowing um, uh, individual instances of, of why a change in the law is needed here. So 
probably from my perspective the most useful thing I can do is maybe talk a little bit about my journey uh, on this issue, uh, but also talk about maybe the, the, the political context um, now and, 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 and perhaps uh, from a historical perspective in terms of previous attempts to change the law. I've, I'm fortunate in not having had really any direct lived experience of a family member or a, or a close friend going through a, a traumatic, painful, bad death. Um, I certainly know many that, that, that do, but I don't have that same lived experience that, uh, that many do. Um, nevertheless, I've, I've been a strong supporter um, of assisted dying um, since I was elected to the Parliament um, first in, in 2007. And I think for me, it, it's, it's increased in importance to me over that period. I think I've always been a strong supporter, but, but the, the, the priority I've attached to the need for the change in the law has definitely increased over that period. And I remember probably the first debate I sat in in the Parliament where I wasn't intending to speak, um, but was just um, interested in sitting in and listening to what others said was a, a members debate brought by my former colleague Jeremy Purvis, now, um, now Baron Purvis uh, of Tweet, um, who at that stage back in 2007-8 um, was trying to bring forward a, a, a bill in the members bill in the Scottish Parliament replicating to a large extent um, what had been put in place in, in Oregon in the United States. Now that was a bill that didn't really get anywhere, there wasn't um, sufficient support really to get it off the ground. But I remember sitting in on that um, debate and just, I think, coming to the conclusion this is what the Parliament should be doing. This was Parliament at its best. There was there was no none of the kind of political knockabout. They were they were genuinely, passionately argued um, cases being made on both sides. Um, it reflected the the, the, the the strong opposition there was to assisted dying at the time. But nevertheless, I, th I thought it was a very moving um, uh, and a very um, compelling uh, debate. Um, and, and I think I would <coughs> I would therefore sort of pay tribute to Jeremy and then subsequently to, to, to Margot MacDonald uh, and to Patrick Harvey for the work they did in making an argument that at the time, and, and this is what struck me during the debate, that some of the things that Jeremy and those arguing for change were making seemed risky. It seemed, if not career limiting, um, certainly putting you in the, in, in the crosshairs in terms of um, attacks from political opponents, uh, campaigns being waged against you that might make it difficult to get re-elected. It, it felt like, um, as I say, uh, something that, um, that, that, that took a, de a degree of, of political courage, and I think it did. Um, it's not to say that I, 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 I wasn't sort of strongly um, attached to the arguments of those making change, but, but having a belief and then having the courage to, to, to make those beliefs known and argue the case for change um, are, are, are two very different things. And, and so therefore, I think I, it, is, it is right to acknowledge that the political environment at that stage is different from um, the environment we see uh, now. I think it's, it's perhaps also the case that while it's been a subject that has, has not been whipped. It has been open to, um, uh, it's a matter of conscience, and therefore MSPs, uh, in theory, uh, were free to, to make a choice, uh, make a decision on how to vote based on, on, on personal choice and their, and their beliefs. However, I think because of the environment I, 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 I just described there, I am not convinced that there wasn't a degree of um, uh, inferred pressure from the political hierarchies, in, certainly in the, in the larger parties, um, uh, that this was probably an issue best um, kind of avoided and, and that um, I don't think anything necessarily was explicitly said to, to, to MSPs, but I got the impression that, that, I got the impression that there were, there were uh, members of the parliament at that stage who felt um, a sort of obligation not to rock the boat. Um, now that's that has changed, and I think the work done uh, in relation to those two bills and the work that Jeremy uh, did uh, have laid the foundations for, for where we are we are now. It was disappointing with with both Margot and then Margot and Patrick's bill that we didn't get to the, the the point where we could start looking at amendments to the to the proposals to tease out where 
where consensus might um, rest, where, where safeguards could be put in place that would allay the concerns that might be uh, around it. It stopped at the point of, of the general principles. But those debates did flush out um, issues. They did, I think, give us an opportunity to, to reflect and come back uh, with proposals that I think now will command the majority support uh, in, in Parliament. Um, and it's been interesting in undertaking interviews in relation to the proposals I have out for consultation that um, a lot of journalists ask the question about, well, this has been rejected by Parliament twice. Why are you bringing it back? As if um, actually having gone through the process on a couple of occasions before, um, that somehow undermines or weakens the argument for bringing forward the proposals. Now, I, I, I believe the reverse is absolutely true. I think, I think the arguments now are stronger, more compelling, and are more likely to be successful because of the experience of having gone through this um, a, a couple of times before, uh, albeit in very different parliaments. And that leads me on to what's the difference now? Why, why are we bringing forward, why am I bringing forward proposals for a, a, a bill now? Well, the political environment is very different. It's only six years since we last voted on, um, on, on uh, Patrick's bill um, back in 2015. But we've had two uh, Holyrood elections since then. Uh, the makeup of the parliament is vastly different. Two thirds of the MSPs that are in the parliament now weren't in the parliament in 2015. Um, and therefore that makes, that makes a, a very great difference. This has always been an issue that has commanded cross-party support, and that cross-party support um, is, is also obviously one of its great strengths, but, but is very, very evident in terms of um, the support there now is in the, in the current, uh, current parliament. We have a, a supporter with a, a steering group um, drawn from members of, of all of the parties in, in parliament, um, members who've been around for a, a number of, of sessions and, and, and newly elected members. And I think that combination is also striking. I don't think, back to that debate that I referred to uh, on um, uh, Jeremy Purvis's members' debate, I, I don't think there were many newly elected MSPs at that stage that would have stepped up and, and, and put their head above the parapet. Now there is a confidence um, and a determination to make that argument whether you've whether you've been in the in the door six months or you've been there for six sessions, and I think that is very telling. Um, I, I think it's interesting also that um, I think it's driven actually uh, to, to a large extent by lived experience. Speaking to, to, to colleagues, the number of colleagues who have experience of a, a family member or a friend having gone through a, 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 a painful bad death is, uh, I, I think, um, is very very telling. Um, and it reflects, I think, what we're seeing in the, in the, in the population at large. It, it's also, I think, helps uh, explain why there are some colleagues who've been on a, a longer journey than I have and, and, and um, perhaps were, were opposed in, 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 uh, in relation to previous bills, but are now, they may still have some misgivings or, or still have answer, uh, questions they need answered, but are now supportive, want to find ways uh, of making this work, putting in place proposals that can be uh, safely uh, and successfully implemented in Scotland. And I think that change in mood, um, it reflects the, the, the consistently strong public um, support. Um, I, I think it, it reflects the fact that it's been, in many respects, politically de-risked, um, if you like, over the last um, six years. That strength of support, and, and I'm sure Ali and other colleagues will, will, will talk about the, 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 the kind of campaigns um, that have been ongoing for some time now. But from a, from a personal perspective and looking at the, the kind of casework I get or the, 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 the mailbag that I get on this issue, the, the strength of the support um, may not have extended vastly, but the intensity of that support has definitely increased. That, that more people see this as a greater order of priority issue than they did um, before. Um, that their voting intentions, if not wholly reliant on um, the, the, the position a candidate or an MSP holds on this issue, will be influenced by that. And I think that is reinforcing the confidence of, of, of my colleagues across the parties that this is an issue that they, they can and should uh, be speaking out on. Um, and that, I think, is, is a, a material uh, difference. I, and it's, 
the way in which the public are engaging with, with MSPs, um, it, there's no point writing abusive letters or, or emails to, to MSPs telling them that um, if, uh, if they don't do this, then, um, then they, they really should be out on their ear. Um, because in a sense, there's, I can't speak for all MSPs, but, but certainly when I receive um, a, a kind of correspondence on, uh, that is, that is hectoring, um, then there's more of an inclination to, to, to kind of suggest, to, to switch off and, and, and almost to ignore. Um, whereas actually the, the correspondence that's coming through, and, and to be fair on, on both sides of the argument, is far more measured. It, it's, it's passionately argued, it's clearly cogently argued, but it also makes clear that this is an issue that matters and matters to, to people when, they, um, when it comes to, to, to elections. And, and um, again, as well as contributing to, to the consultation, I think if you have a, an opportunity and those you're speaking to have an opportunity, making clear to, to your MSPs, to your constituency MSPs, to your regional MSPs, where you stand on this and, and where you hope um, that they may uh, ultimately uh, come to be on this issue, I think is important, uh, important too. Um, I think the other thing that's changed over that six years is obviously international precedence. Again, we'll probably hear more about that in, in due course. But, but that, I think, again, reinforces the sense of confidence that, that a change in the law here is not something kind of um, uh, groundbreaking. It, it is what more and more citizens around the world have come to uh, expect and, and a choice that they uh, enjoy. And, and obviously this week we've seen um, uh, progress in, in New South Wales and Australia. We've seen uh, progress in, 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 in Jersey in the UK. I have to say that's I, I'm tinged with mild regret there that they are, they are now out in front of us and therefore the groundbreaking uh, that I, th I thought I was leading is, is, is perhaps to be denied me. But I, I think that, that only helps to feed the sense of momentum that this is a change uh, whose uh, time has, has come. I think a, a, another difference I would note in terms of um, six years back and, and now is is is, um, uh, is the, the mood within the medical profession. I think they were very very influential in the in the last debate and certainly many opponents um, who may have had a range of reasons for for opposing um, uh, the, the legislation at the time were able to pray and aid um, the likes of the BMA uh, and one or two other uh, medical organisations to say that because of their misgivings, this was this was something we really should fight shy of. Um, the BMA, as, you'll, as I'm sure you'll be aware, have, have moved to a neutral position, which I, I think is really the only legitimate position that an organisation like the BMA um, can hold, given the range of views within their own membership. And I think it, it places them in the same way as it does with, with, with other organisations uh, who have that neutral stance, puts them in an excellent position to provide that challenge function to, to robustly scrutinise and challenge the proposals um, that uh, I'm, I'm bringing forward, uh, but in a way that is, uh, I think, uh, less about contesting the, the, the legitimacy, the validity of, of a change in the law, but uh, engaging with the substance of how we can, uh, we can introduce these changes in a way that, that, that reflects the, the, the legitimate concerns or questions uh, that um, those within the medical pr profession have uh, about any such uh, change. And I think the other final change from, from my perspective in terms of six years ago compared to now is, is in the tone. Um, there are still those who provide a, a, a shrill voice uh, in opposition. But whether it's in faith groups, whether it's amongst um, uh, medical professionals, whether it's amongst <coughs> disability groups, um, those that were, that, that it, to a greater or lesser extent, were, were kind of ranged against um, the, the argument for, for change back in 2015. The way in which they are uh, communicating the concerns they have, the questions they have, even the opposition they have, seems to me at this stage, and, it, and, it, and it's early, we're still at a consultation phase, but it remains to be seen when, when a bill is, is brought forward whether the, the kind of volume um, uh, increases and, and, and um, it, it becomes more shrill. But at this stage, it, it strikes me as more measured. There's almost a kind of recognition that there's momentum behind this and putting yourself in the position of just being implacably opposed makes it very difficult for you then um, to, to, to make a constructive uh, contribution to, to shaping whatever proposals are being taken forward. And, and, and I think that is that's an important, uh, important distinction. And I know that even amongst those that 
support change. There will be those that are disappointed that um, what I'm proposing don't, doesn't go further. Um, it, it is the criteria are more tightly defined than, than previous iterations of, of, uh, of a bill in this area. Um, and, and, I'm, and I'm sure that will, that will um, prompt criticism in, in some quarters. I understand that, but I think back to what I said before about trying to build that confidence, build that consensus, and build that support uh, for what is a small but absolutely significant change in the law is, is um, to me, of paramount importance. And, and I, think, uh, in, I think that can only be achieved uh, by um, coalescing around the proposals, and, and we'll wait to see what comes out of the consultation, but, but broadly the proposals that I've put forward to limit this to uh, adults uh, with a terminal uh, illness, with mental capacity, and with various other safeguards uh, around and about that. Um, so I, I think, I'm not sure there's, there's, there's a great deal more I can add. I, I think that this is, this is something that, for me, um, is very much anchored in, in liberal principles, in, in, in the kind of reasons I became a, a, a liberal democrat, um, in terms of the, 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 the case for compassion, the case for choice. Um, but it's, it, it's not something on which my party has any more of a monopoly than, than anybody else. The strength of the case here has always been um, its ability to, to, to speak to uh, those of, of all parties and, and, and none that cross-party support is going to be absolutely critical, obviously, in taking forward these, uh, these proposals. But I do believe that this is um, the right bill um, at the right time. Um, it will require all of you and many more to write in um, but I'm confident that it has the momentum behind it. What we do, though, need to, to make sure we do now is take the time to reflect on what comes through through the, the consultation, ensure that what's presented to, to Parliament is as robust a bill as possible, but then expect and support as rigorous scrutiny as, as, as possible as this goes through the, uh, the three stages, I hope the three stages, of, of parliamentary uh, scrutiny. And through that, throughout that process, um, I'm sure that those of you in this room and, and others, uh, members of the public, need to continue to engage. Contributing to the consultation is one thing, but there'll be bumps along the road, I'm, I'm fairly sure. And I think for those uh, who are supportive of a change in the law here, I think continuing to reassure myself, um, my colleagues, that we're getting it right. If we're not getting it right, tell us where you think. Um, we, we, we need to be making changes, but not leaving and ceding the ground to those who are opposed. I think very often what happens in political debates is where there's a sense that things are moving generally in the right direction. So it tends to people sit, sit back and say, well, that's great, they're getting on and they're doing it, um, and leaving the field pretty much free to, to, to those who are opposed um, to, to make clear their, uh, their, their opposition. So it doesn't need to be um, uh, a, a debate that happens in, in bunkers. I, I hope that it's not, and, and, and I know colleagues um, who, who, MSP colleagues who are opposed to this, with whom I've had very good, frank discussions, but, but respectful discussions, discussions that um, aren't just about lobbying insults or, 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 or um, criticising the motives. Uh, that be behind um, uh, an individual's um, stance on this issue, and I hope that we can we can maintain that. But as I say, it would be helpful if throughout this process, you, um, and I'm sure you will, um, you remain engaged in this because it's going to be it's going to be a, a long journey. As I say, there's going to be bumps along the road, but I'm absolutely convinced um, that uh, the the momentum for change here is now irresistible, and I look forward to playing my part in bringing that uh, over the line. Thank you very much indeed.